fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. The Wasatch Mountains frame the Cache Valley, where on select fall weekends, the serenity is broken by the Utah State Stampede to the stadium. Tonight, a longtime opponent, BYU, has come to town. The locals are hoping this could be the year to topple the Cougars. They have a talented dual-threat quarterback in DeAndre Burrell, but hold the opposite, one of the stars of the future. Freshman Jake Heaps has been tabbed as the next great BYU passer. We welcome you to ESPN's College Football Primetime, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. We're at Merlin Olsen Field at Romney Stadium, the 80th meeting between BYU and Utah State. Good evening, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore, as always, joined by my partner, Rod Gilmore. Both these teams have not had the start to their seasons that they have expected. Both teams are one and three. Both teams have been greatly affected by injuries. Now, Rod, Utah State is building up their program. Yeah. But for BYU, they're not used to this, and we're not used to talking about them in this way. Yeah, how strange is this? I mean, you think BYU, you think postseason, and you think quarterbacks. Now, they have an issue on both those fronts. There's a sense of urgency tonight because they cannot afford another loss. They have a tough schedule down the road with TCU and Utah. Another loss tonight would probably jeopardize the postseason. The urgency at quarterback is that you think Steve Young and all those great quarterbacks, and they haven't had that great play. They're turning to a freshman, Jake Heaps, tonight to really get it done. He was part of a two-quarterback system, but it's all his show now. Top recruit coming out of high school, big arm. We'll see if he can get it done for them. As for the other quarterback, DeAndre Burrell on Utah State, he went for 341 yards against Oklahoma, had them in position <laughs> to possibly pull off that uh, upset. What do we expect out of him tonight? You know, big plays. I mean, he was great against Oklahoma. I remember that game, fantastic. Made plays with his feet and with his arm. The challenge for him is to not do too much. They've had so many injuries that he's tried to take over so much of the offense. They have to find other people to help him out tonight, and that's the big question for Utah State. It has been 17 years since Utah State topped BYU. The in-state battle is set. We will have kickoff when we return to Logan. Orange, sugar, and the Tostitos BCS National Championship game. ESPN, the BCS lives here. That's about 50 minutes north of us at Bear Lake, a majestic setting in Utah, surrounded by limestone. Of course, we're in Logan, home of the Aggies. Utah State tucked into the western edge of the mountain range, and they are just about ready for kickoff here against BYU. And there is the Cougars coach, Bronco Mendenhall, his sixth year leading them. First five years, he notched 49 wins. That's the 10th best start to a coaching career in college football history. Not a lot of patience around Provo with uh, those things going on. And there's Gary Anderson, Utah State's head coach. Second season here. He's had a rough week, Rod. Tuesday morning he was at home, felt lightheaded, took a bad fall, suffered a concussion, hurt his neck. He's gone through a series of medical tests. And he's been cleared to be on the field level without the neck brace that he was wearing for a few days. Yeah, incredible story. We'll have to talk about that more as this ball game goes on. So Utah State won the toss deferred, so BYU will receive Nick Diaz with the kickoff here, and it is fielded at the 10-yard line by McKay Jacobson. And he takes it out to the 26. BYU has handed the keys to the family car to Jake Heaps. Looks like we have a late flag on that kickoff return by Jacobson. Looks like they're marking that off against BY against Utah State. Offside. Number 30 of the kicking team. Five yards. Added to the end of the run. First down. 
BYU. So the true freshman from the Seattle area heaps. We'll start things off at the 31. And DeLuigi gets the call and JJ DeLuigi out to the 36. So Jake Heaps, the true freshman from the Seattle area, Washington was his hometown team, but his faith was a big reason he came to BYU, was an early enrollee last year, this his second ever start. Big time recruit, lots of folks were in on him, but he decided to come to BYU. To pass on second and five, and he has the first down yardage to Jacobson. Hey, Tess, let's take a look at the BYU offense. Start with their skill players. They are looking for production on the outside. McKay Jacobson was a big threat for them the last uh, couple of seasons he's played. Has struggled to find a wide receiver to step up this season so far. Up front, Matt Reynolds, left tackle, outstanding NFL prospect. DeLuigi going to test that front four, and he shakes loose and gets free to the outside. And J.J. DeLuigi crosses midfield. A first down run was finally taken down by Walter McClinton. And here's that Utah State defense up front. You will notice number 50, Sean Inessi. He makes the all-hair team with the way his locks flew out of his helmet. Bobby Wagner, outstanding linebacker. He makes a lot of plays for them. We'll keep our eye on him most of this night. And in the secondary, they have a couple of really good corners. Heaps gets a complete to Kazana. And he is close to the 40-yard line. Kyle Gallagher, the middle linebacker for the Aggies, was quick to get to Josh Juice Quezada. He is a true freshman from Southern California. Quezada now on the ground on second down. And just a minimal gain. And we will see our first third down for Jake Heaps and the Cougars tonight. Hey, Tess, notice the tempo. I mean, BYU is not typically a hurry-up offense, not that fast-paced, two-minute drill, no huddle. But they wanted to pick it up because Heap was really comfortable with it last week. So they're trying to make sure that Heaps is able to do that at the start of this ballgame. Third and three, and DeLuigi back in, flanking Heaps in the gun. Reverse delayed handoff, and DeLuigi has nowhere to go as Gallagher just was able to target him every which way. They tried to get Crafty Rod. Yeah, you know, I, I think he danced a little bit too much in that hole. DeLuigi, on a short yard of situation like that, plow, plow ahead, and I think he was looking to try and make something a little bit bigger happen, and now you're in that no-man's territory. Do you go for it or punt it? and BYU is leaning towards the punt here. First charge timeout, Utah State. So Utah State is going to talk things over. They will have the ball when we return. Stay with us. We are in the Beehive State for Friday night primetime game this week. Utah, of course, the Beehive considered to be synonymous with industry and perseverance. These famously hard workers, as are these two squads out here tonight, BYU and Utah State. I could uh, do without the bees and the wasps that have been flying around the booth up here, though. <laughs> <laughs> I took out about five I know. earlier. Thank goodness. So Stevenson's a punt now. Eric Motes going for the fair catch, and this is going to work out well. <laughs> Shane Hunter is trying to keep it in play there. Utah State's DeAndre Burrell has started 25 straight games at quarterback. One of only six active quarterbacks with over 5,000 career passing yards and 1,000 career rushing yards. So one of those real dual threat guys. Rob. A very talented athlete, good quickness, great change of direction, strong arm, loves to get out of the pocket and make plays. So after the strong punt by Stevenson, they will be pinned back at their own three. Here comes pressure off the edge. Burrell will shovel pass forward to Spate. And Spate with a good gainer out to the 11-yard line. You know, Tess, this Utah State offense is a little 
banged up. They lost a couple of key wide receivers. Watkins and Moats are expected to step up for them an awful lot. They lost a couple guys in the backfield as well. Up front, you'll see that they'll be doing some changes, offensive tackle issues on both sides of there. They're missing, missing uh, Spencer Johnson. Looking to dig themselves out of this hole. Here's Spate. And he cannot get room out in front. Just dives back to the original line of scrimmage. Andrew Rich came up defensively. Well, here is the BYU defense. And up front, 37, Vic Sooto is an outstanding player. You get a look at him. They're missing one of their top players up front. And in that uh, linebacking area, you'll see Jordan Pendleton, number one, get involved an awful lot in things. And Travis Avele. Option to the far side. Burrell has it. And a lot more. DeAndre Burrell all the way out to midfield. Travis Uwali was quick to push him out at the 50, but a 39-yard run by Burrell. Uh, we talked about his athleticism. When he's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, he's going to win this. Now watch what happens right here. There he is. He's up front with the linebacker. That's 51, and he's moving away from him easily. Shane Hunter in a tough spot going one on one with Burrell. Quick screen to Watkins. And Watkins taken down by Brian Logan, the cornerback for the Cougars. You know, Tess, the, the, the wide open plays, getting Burrell one on one with a secondary guy or with a linebacker is a big advantage for Utah State. He's such a great athlete. And now a little wildcat with Spate. And Spate to the 45. So it'll bring up a third and six. Kyle Vinoy was able to take down Spate. Well, they've been searching for someone else to step up and help out on the offensive side because Burrell has been carrying the load an awful lot this season. Empty backfield, Bartlett, the tight end, comes in motion on third and six. Now Spate joins him in the backfield. Burrell threw it behind the intended target, Kellen Bartlett. Well, we talked about his strong arm. They've had some issues with accuracy, continuity between receivers and quarterback. This one clearly just behind him. And accuracy from the quarterback spot is critical, absolutely critical. Nothing is more important in the quarterback than his accuracy. Brandon Loveless on to punt to McKay Jacobson. High booming kick by Loveless. And it takes a good Utah State bounce inside the 10, and they're going to down it at the 6. So Utah State at least changed the field position, but Eaps is coming back out. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by New York Life Insurance Company and Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. Here's where you and I disagree, because I look at Suckling King and I say, I just start Wipe in my mouth. Yeah, I don't know why you bother to take me to places that serve that kind of stuff. Now, for you, we need some uh, shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So Utah State, we told you they changed the field position. Indeed, they did from their own three. Now BYU from their own six. A 91-yard difference based on the long run and then the punt. Here's Heaps. And DiLuigi could not hang on. Yeah, he's got to help Heaps out. Remember, you got a freshman quarterback who's taken over after sharing time with Riley Nelson, they had a two quarterback system. And, you know, Tess, I'm not sure that that helped this program. I mean, this is a program used to throwing the ball deep and having one guy. They had two guys. There's Di Luigi. And he is wrapped up at about the 12-yard line by Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner is a guy we'll talk about as the night goes on. For now, let's focus in on Jake Heaps, Rod. Yeah, had a great high school career, almost never lost a game, top-rated quarterback coming out, and uh, was vying for the starting spot here 
as a true freshman, shared the time with Riley Nelson. Nelson, a little bit more of a running quarterback, keeps more of a pocket guy with a strong arm. Facing a third and four here. The Luigi moves out to the slot. Trying to get to that line to make, but he is stood up right away. Di Luigi caught the ball a yard short, and the Aggies defense was quick to jump on him. Bobby Wagner led the way. Yeah, we talked about him, Bobby Wagner, at the top of the telecast, and what a great tackle he made in that play. Came in, hit him high, kept him short of the first down, and now you got a chance to get good field position. And Wagner, just, just an outstanding job, and a guy who probably going to wind up playing on Sundays. Yeah, he's a guy that the scouts have been coming to see. And Stevenson will be punting from the goal line and Eric Motes sets up back at the 40 to try to create good field position for the Aggies. Motes driven all the way back and he bottled the ball for a moment and very good special teams play and coverage by BYU. A flag is down back at the 20, but a 56-yard punt by Stevenson. Matt Marshall was quick to get down. And Corral Motes. During the kick, holding number 18 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot. First down. So they'll be backed up. Saturday Night Football continues on ABC, and this is going to be a dandy with the two top teams in the Pac-10 right now. Stanford and Oregon, number nine against number four. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. 8 o'clock Eastern, ABC and ESPN2, because some may see Notre Dame and Boston College. You know, everyone talks about this game being a high-scoring affair. I'm not convinced that, that that will be the case. I think Oregon and Stanford are both underrated, particularly Stanford on the defensive side. Well, I think pacing-wise, that would play more towards Stanford, wouldn't it? A lower-scoring, yeah. pounding, grinded-out game. And the inside handoff just goes for about a yard and a half, Joey DiMartino. You think about what... This comparison looks like people talk about high scoring because of these stats. You, you see what's up there, fourth and first and points scored out there and rushing. They're both doing very well. But I, I think the defenses of both these teams are underrated. I know that that's the case with Stanford. They've moved to a 3-4 front and getting great cornerback play these days. Play action for Burrell. Airs it out downfield and a wide open Martin. Xavier Martin. Can he stay in? Yes. Touchdown, Aggies. Smooth as could be, Burrell to Xavier Martin. A 79 yard stunner against that BYU defense. Well, Tess, did he stay in bounds? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Good footwork and a nice route. Good freshman Braden Warpless on to kick. And he puts it through. Well, I think they're finding out quickly that you better not get caught in single coverage on Xavier Martin. He's a bit too fast for it. Thumbs up for Burrell. 79-yard strike to Martin. There is Xavier Martin. He's already on the bike. He wants to stay hot. And his red hot moments ago with the 79 yard tiptoeing the sideline touchdown reception for Utah State. Nick Diaz to kick. JJ DeLuigi and McKay Jacobson will be back for the Cougars. DeLuigi. 
he's taken out at the 22. And Tess, let's go back to the touchdown. Utah State game plan for the aggressive play of this safety, Andrew Rich. Now watch what he does as Martin gets behind him. Dave Baldwin, offensive coordinator, saw this would be coming, and what he did was he had this guy blocking here, and Rich bit on it, lost a couple of steps, lost where he was supposed to be in coverage, and Martin gets behind him. And that's all on offensive coordinator Dave Baldwin told us earlier in the week he wanted to take advantage of those aggressive safeties and Martin was the guy who was able to benefit from it. Martin gets the payoff. Baldwin, a well-experienced offensive guy, former head coach at San Jose State, was the offensive coordinator at Michigan State when Drew Stanton was in his prime. He's been looking for ways to help out his, his quarterback, and all week long he was looking at this aggressive play of the safeties and trying to come up with a way to get his guys behind the safeties to take advantage of it, and they get it done early in the ballgame. Referee was dealing with his equipment, so a slight delay before BYU's first play on this offensive series. How about that uh, accurate throw by Burrell? No, he was on. He was smooth every which yep. way yep. on that play. Sold it, delivered it. Luigi. In that I formation, Zendenhall, the fullback, keeps the pass. And he gets it out to his fullback, Mendenhall, who is cut down right away by Walter McClinton, one of the real vocal leaders of this Aggies defense. I'm not sure people understand just how big a game this is for Utah State. I mean, they sense for the first time in a decade that BYU is vulnerable, that they have a chance to beat these guys after taking just flat out whippings over the years. Yeah, BYU has won 10 straight. Keeps the pass on second and eight. And is off the fingertips of Cody Hoffman. Chris Randall had the coverage on the red shirt freshman. Hoffman's a big target at six foot four. Yeah, and he's a he's about six four. Good looking athlete. And even just a little too tall for him to come up with that one. That's when you gotta catch to help out your young quarterback freshman needs guys to step up and make plays around him set up the screen to Divoigi gets a block out in front gets to the corner and dives for the first down they're going to spot him right on that line to make Kyle Gallagher was the one that tried to cut him down before Divoigi went airborne yeah, he's going to be short now we'll see where the spot is here uh, unless he got a really good spot on it oh he got it yep got a good spot wow watch how he dives forward here at the end yep. and you see the helmet of Gallagher come off yeah <laughs> he throws his body around doesn't he reverse pivot now Quezada and he cannot break free. Bobby Wagner and a flag comes in late. Wagner was all over him. But we'll see what the call is here. Could be a late hit. After the play, personal foul, late hit, number 91 in the defense. 15 yard penalty, push down, BYU. That was DJ Tialavea. Well, there he is right there. It's just a case of guys down and coming in late and also high. It's not even close. Danny Garola is the normal starting nose tackle, but Tialavea gets the nod tonight with Garola out with the injury. So a first down for the Cougars. Almost intercepted. They tried to set up the screen. But Viana Cola, he read that perfectly. Let's well, you know how everything comes out quick. Everything is designed to get the ball out so Heaps is not under duress and doesn't get knocked around. Everything is a quick three step or a screen.
Eats. Here's the quick throw, and this is complete to Cody Hoffman. So the true freshman quarterback from the Seattle area, making just his second ever start. Riley Nelson had started BYU's first three games of the season, but he has a bad shoulder, and his season is over with surgery. So they'll go with Heaps the rest of the way. A lot of pressure on Heaps. He threw it 45 times last week. Third and five now. Korea in the backfield with him. Three receivers to the top. Man in motion is Ashworth. Aggies come with pressure. Heaps gets rid of it, and it is intercepted. Chris Randall picks off Jake Heaps. Bobby Wagner made for pressure, and Randall gets the turnover. Well, they brought pressure up the middle to distract everyone so that they could free up Wagner on the outside. And watch the great play. As you see right there, that was Randall getting in there but also not a real strong effort to get over there in front of the ball by McKay Jacobson. Kind of cut off his rod a little bit. So Burrell inside handoff to Spate. And Spate crosses midfield. You know, uh, Tess talking to Bronco Mendenhall this week. You know, we asked him, uh, are fans taking it okay that you guys have this one and three start? You've got young quarterback and a bunch of injuries. And now, nah, you kidding? Spate from the Wildcat. And just a gain of two, Austin Jorgensen wrapped up Swerven Durbin, as he is known here at Utah State. Let's go back and look at that interception by Randall. Yeah, now see, he's sitting in there trying to go to Jacobson. And McKay Jacobson doesn't keep coming across the middle. And Randall sitting right there. Third and three now. Can the Aggies take advantage of that turnover in this prime field position? Option. And a first down as Travis Reynolds, the wide receiver, came into that formation and was the recipient of the pitch from Burrell. Got a good block by his fellow receiver, Eric Mose. You see Randall, who had the pickoff, loosening up there. Can't be hurt after you get a pick. No, no. He's running on all energy. He's feeling pretty good. They option it again. This time it is Motes, and he has very little room there on the boundary. As Brandon Bailey got over to him, a senior from Tallahassee, Florida. I know uh, you and I were both quite stunned to hear about the things that happened to head coach Gary Anderson you know, this week. Lightheaded, took a fall, suffered a concussion. Williams now on second and nine, powering ahead for a couple of yards. Jordan Pendleton wrapped him up. You know, Tess, probably the most amazing thing, though, was he admitted to us that he has not had a physical in over 20 years. That, you know, and this is, uh, I mean, this was the subject of outside the lines yep. today of the stress on college head coaches and keeping up with their medicals and what they go through. Of course, we have the situation with Mark Bantonio and Urban Meyer this past year, and now Gary Anderson feeling the effects. Spate, a first down and more. Durbin Spate taken down to the 18-yard line. Well, they have them off balance now. I mean, they're running some option. They are doing everything they need to do. Good block by Ty Rogers out there at the tackle spot on that screen. And now they, they can do what they want. They can throw screens. They can run it. Good balance. And Burrell appears to be just very relaxed here. You see the senior leadership. And now he pitches to DiMartino, who is cut down for just a gain of about a yard and a half by Andrew Rich and Jordan Pendleton. Just finishing the point on Anderson, he's like so many coaches in this profession who really don't make their own health and well-being a priority. It is about the game, the players, and everything else. And you lose sight of the fact that so many folks are depending on you. you got to take care of yourself. 
And he said it was a real wake up call this week. Burrell now. As a flag comes in, and Burrell was looking for room in the middle of that BYU defensive line. He found Hunter and Van Noy instead, and we'll see what the penalty is. There is no infraction on the play. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, I'm just amazed that there aren't more athletic directors that require that their head coaches that they pay so much money to, you know, are getting annual physicals. Third and six now. A little pistol look option to the near side. Williams cannot cut back against the grain. Pendleton was in on that play. Jordan Pendleton, whose sister is married to Austin Coley, the star receiver of the Indianapolis Colts. Of course, Coley left BYU early for the NFL back in 2008. His father was a wide receiver back in the 80s, played with Steve Young. Raiden Lovelace on to attempt the 34-yarder. And he is able to put that through. So they take advantage of the interception. And we look at the life is good flashback. This goes back to 1993 when BYU and Utah State hooked up, scored a lot of points, a 58-56 ball game. Anthony Cavillo was the quarterback for Utah State, and they would win it 58-56. The only Aggie win in the last 21 meetings, and they tore down the goalposts. That's our Life's Good flashback brought to you by LG. There are pieces of the goalposts everywhere, all around campus. Dangerous, dangerous time for BYU. They've got to get something going offensively and get back in the ball game. Jacobson stumbled for a moment and then hit hard at the 25. You know, Tess, we talked about heaps, and last week he threw it 45 times. That's an awful lot. Strictly for a freshman, 6 of 10 tonight. And all those passes have been short. And you can tell Utah State starting to kind of get closer to the line of scrimmage, crowding the line of scrimmage. You're going to have to get them to loosen up and take some shots down the field. Let's see how he reacts after throwing that pick moments ago. They go to the ground with Quezada. As the quarter will be coming to an end here. And it was all Utah State in the face of the true freshman quarterback. The 79 yard touchdown was the big play that got them going. us here in Logan, Utah. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. BYU in the midst of a three-game losing streak. They haven't lost four straight since 1993. Here's Quezada. Out to the 38-yard line. 
We apologize for the technical difficulties. And Coach Gary Anderson. Third and three, and a first down run by Quezada. Gary Anderson actually coaches up that defensive front. Recently signed a six year extension to stay here at Utah State. Was a successful recruiter at Utah, defensive coordinator for the Utes when they had all their success in recent years. Mm -hmm. Worked with Kyle Whittingham over there at Utah. So first down for BYU. Kizada gets the call again. And a minimal gain into the middle of that Aggies defense. Well, trying to go back to the run game, take some pressure off the freshman quarterback, set up some play action pass if they can establish something. One of the few teams that we see that will use two backs. Robert and I. New center, new quarterback, new tight ends for this BYU offense, and they've been dealing with injuries, so a lot to overcome. Second and seven. Heaps has it complete to his tight end, Holt, and that ball goes out. Yeah, they marked him down. They no. marked him down yeah. prior to that. Quentin Bird tried to get in there and strip it. Let's take a look at the end of this play as Bird came in. Uh, I don't know about that. But, oh, yeah, it hits him on the backside and then comes out. Well, he was starting to get an awkward grip on that ball with one hand behind his back. Learn to put that puppy away. That was close. So a third and five now. Heaps steps up in the pocket. First down, BYU, McKay Jacobson. Ten-yard gain as the true freshman quarterback took his time and found Jacobson. And he wanted nobody but Jacobson. Jacobson averaged more than 20 yards a catch a couple of seasons ago after uh, coming back from two years on a Mormon mission. Once again, we apologize for the technical difficulties that you may be having seeing the picture. Plenty of time for the freshman, and it's incomplete as he tried to find Ashworth crossing over the middle. You know, and offensive coordinator Nye is trying to keep Heath out of those third and long situations. He's facing a second and long now. He wants to cut into that without exposing his young quarterback to the blitz. I think they're going to flag uh, the Utah State that had a substitution issue there. It looked like they had a lot of guys running on the field. Substitution infraction. 12 players on the defense. Snap was imminent. Five yard penalty. Second down. Saturday afternoon, three college football games will be available regionally on ABC or ESPN. You got Texas, Oklahoma. Boy, Texas could use a big bounce back, huh? Man. Wisconsin, big. Michigan State, Virginia Tech, North Carolina. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, part of Tailgate Week on ABC or ESPN, 3.30 Eastern. You know, UCLA just ran up and down the field on Texas. and didn't bother to even try and throw the football. You know, I know there were questions with the Texas offense, but the Texas defense had looked so oh. solid up until that point flea flicker back to heaps airs it out downfield and he's lucky that wasn't picked off he was looking for McKay Jacobson but you saw Roderick Coleman and Curtis Marsh just waiting on that toss from heaps like, like waiting for a punt this thing was never open great play by Coleman to keep his discipline and stay in the middle of the field that play was never open never open actually hits off the face mask of Roderick Coleman. Well, you know, if you play defensive back long enough, it'll happen to you, because if you can catch, you'd be a wide receiver. Third and 
35. And DiLuigi is going to come up a yard short of that line to make Walter McClinton with the tackle for Utah State. Decision time. It'll be fourth and one. Oh. And a couple of tight ends are coming in yep. for the Cougars. Yep, they're going heavy. I don't have a problem with this. They've got to get back in the ball game. They've been running the ball well this drive. A lot of confidence in, our, in that offensive line. I think it's an okay decision right here, right now, given what they've been doing this drive. DiLuigi to the outside. No! He is wrapped up immediately by Gallagher and Chris Randall. Hey, Tess, I like the decision to go for it. I don't like the decision to go outside. I mean, they've run the ball pretty decently inside, and they go wide here, and this is a little bit swifter team outside perimeter linebackers flying and Anderson has his guys flying to the ball. Yeah you think coach Anderson likes that. Gallagher who's the epitome of a middle linebacker just flies around an extremely violent kind of player. And now Burrell back to business. He goes downfield. And he overthrows Eric Motes, but he took a shot on first down. Yeah, Motes was well covered by Andrew Rich, who was victimized earlier on the long touchdown pass, and they keep going after Rich when they get the matchups that they like. Quick to get to that line. As Burrell worked under center now with Spate lined up just two yards behind him. And he takes that inside carry and he drives it over the 40 yard line. Hey, Tess, we talked about Anderson being back after his fainting spell on Monday. This is his reaction after all that emotion he expended with that fourth down stop. He had to walk away from everybody and kind of collect himself again. Now, remember, he's been at doctors all week long. And being on the field, this is the first time he's put this much time out on his feet, you know, since the incident. Was lightheaded, took a fall, suffered a concussion, was in a neck brace up until two days ago. Over the middle on third down, that is complete to Bartlett. And a big gainer for Utah State, crossing midfield as Burrell finds Bartlett on third down. And once again, we're seeing just that veteran leadership of Burrell. Conway goes to the line, looks things over, and makes the easy toss. And he's now split out wide as they've gone to their version of the Wildcat. And here is the Wildcat with Williams this time. And a good surge ahead by Kerwin Williams and that front line for the Aggies. To your point about Burrell, he was trying to do too much last week with all the injuries. Now he's sort of asking his teammates to help, and he's not trying to force the issue tonight. They couldn't have played worse at San Diego State. And tonight, as good of a start as they've had, coaches told us the best three days of practice they've seen in two years with this team. Williams straight ahead and it looks like he's right on that line to make. Kerwin Williams a sophomore from Vegas. Brandon Ogletree wrapped him up. He's been out with a knee injury had been the starting linebacker now back to business for the Cougars defense. This, this is a critical time for BYU all week long you and I talk about game planning and whatnot and we talk about the three score lead when you get up by three scores that's when you start to take a team out of their game plan that's when the panic starts to set, uh, set in it's not the one two score lead but 17 points 21 points that's when you start thinking wow even if we get one score we're still down two possessions. Just short. But what a difference a week makes for Coach Gary Anderson and this offense. As Burrell not pressing, yep. he's doing his thing. Look at last week against San Diego State compared to just, you know, a quarter and change yeah. here. Exactly. Tonight, they look more like the team we saw the opening week against Oklahoma. When they were able to run it and throw it down the field, Burrell was really active, made big plays, and didn't force the issue. He's not forcing it tonight.
second charge timeout. So a timeout for Utah State. A great week for Friday fantasy football coming up. Tough choices to make. Andy Dalton on the road. How about Kellen Moore and Boise favored by 40? Or Colin Kaepernick against UNLV? We'll find out who Rod selects when we come back. Welcome back to Utah State up 10 zip. Time to take a look at our Friday fantasy football. Every week, Colin Cowherd from ESPN Radio joins Rod and me. We put out our selections. These are last week's results, Rod. Do we need to put my results up? I'm dying at the wide receiver spot. I mean, I got a nice job out of everybody else, so to speak, except the curse of the wide receivers. You can see the season totals there. Is Collins been having a nice couple weeks. Yeah, I called him out and challenged him and he kicked my butt. So third and in inches now. Spate picks up the first down for the Aggies. All right, so this week, Rod, where are you heading for Friday fantasy football? <laughs> I'm heading to Sports Nation on ESPN.com. I'm asking the public to help me out with the wide receivers. I, I need help. They're sending you a lifeline there? Yeah, pretty much. Something like that. You know, I've, I've got my little iPad there. I just use that, and I'm, I've put it out there for the nation and said, hey, help me out, make some picks. And people have been going online and helping out and helping me pick a wide receiver. I wonder who they've chosen for me. The reverse now. Going to throw it downfield. And there was definite interference there inside the five yard line as they were trying to get it down to McKeel Morgan. So the Cougars defense will be flagged as Uwali and Bradley just converged on him. Yeah, it's an easy call. The fake worked at the beginning of the play, caused the secondary to bite up towards the line of scrimmage. Pass interference. Number 23 of the defense, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Now inside the 20. For yeah. The Aggies. Yeah, you know, you just you see very clearly them just running into the receiver. Uwale, the lead guy on that. And the Burrell took a shot there. Burrell. Going to try to get to the outside himself, and he does. And you see that instant burst of speed that Burrell has. Glad you're with us here in Logan, Utah. BYU, three-game losing streak. Haven't lost four straight since 1993, which was also the last time that these Utah State Aggies upset them. Brian Logan is a man down for BYU. Utah State opened things up with a big 79 yard touchdown catch by Xavier Martin and they've been looking fairly smooth offensively since that point. So Brian Logan is starting cornerback for BYU. I appreciate you. To him. Appreciate you're not uh, wearing me out about my picks. You know I did come from behind last season to win after a full start. You did. You won by three points. All right. So this week's picks. Man I've been calling a couple of games on Saturdays and Cam Newton is something special. He goes up against Louisiana, Louisiana Monroe. The Arkansas State defense is the reason I chose Bilal Powell. He should have a good day. As for Colin, you see Denard, Michael James, and Polaris at Hawaii. Rod, your picks. Yes, yeah, I would have gone with the Hawaii receiver, but the fans went A.J. Green for me. I can't complain about that. He's back, and Jonathan Franklin of UCLA facing that Washington State defense. Of course, you can log on to ESPN.com and follow college fantasy football. Second and three now. Spate. Spin move to the six yard line. Wally and Hunter. Able to get to Spate. It'll be first and goal for Gary Anderson's offense. Well, they've had control. They've been able to run everything they wanted to run coming into this ball game. The option, Wildcat. And here is Wildcat as Spate takes a direct snap. And he is taken down all the way at the 11-yard line by Jadon Wagner. And a flag is down.
after the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number seven of the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. That's just brutal when you make a negative play like that. Jadon Wagner had came in and gave a big boost to that BYU defense, and then Brian Logan does that. Well, and I think with Logan, the fighting was occurring away from the ball, and they had nothing to do with the play. He was mixing it up with the wide receiver far from the play. So they're right back to a first and goal. Spate gets it and tries to charge his way into the end zone and they're going to mark him just short. He gets his pad level down and plows into the man. Great running on the goal line. Hard to tell from that angle where he went down. Spate. And once again, they run in to make the mark short. BYU saying the ball came loose. Yeah, and Utah State is saying touchdown. But the officials are saying mark it about an inch away from that goal line. Looked like Shane Hunter came in and stripped that ball. And I believe Funaki Assisi did jump on it. The offensive lineman for Utah State. Let's look if we can see in the middle of all those bodies. Yeah, does that ball come out? Well, he didn't have. He opens ball. his hands yeah. and he doesn't yeah. have a ball. Yeah, he got to the goal line without the football. It's like a disappearing act. You really there can hardly see it come out when he's down, and then all of a sudden it's resting on his leg. Before a smart play by Funaki Assisi, the left guard, to just jump on it. Yeah, clearly from that first angle, Spade went down. Because he didn't have the ball. His helmet's in the end zone, but not the football. Well, and then he opens his arms, and yeah. it reveals the fact that the ball was missing. So you saw the linesman run in and mark the ball just short of the goal line. And then there was all the commotion over, wait a minute, it's a loose ball, and Utah State retained possession. video evidence to say otherwise and for now it stands as a third and goal referee Terry Layden after further review the ruling on the field stands third down no explanation from Wayne. Well, just that the ruling on the field stands. Yeah. And that creates a third and goal just outside that goal line. So State is in the backfield with Burrell. Burrell's going to try to do it himself. Cuts in with ease and then took a shot as he crossed the goal line. But a touchdown for the upset minded Aggies. Design run, you see the guard pulling, and there was nobody really in front of him. Burrell had his choice of going outside or inside.
17 zip lead here. DeAndre Burrell capping an 11 play drive. And Gary Anderson after a tough week feeling good. Seen here at Romney Stadium in Logan, Utah. Tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. They're firing up some burgers and dogs. Great setting as we look at the Wasatch Mountain Range that stretches from Utah and the Idaho border south through central Utah. Short kick fielded at the 11 by Falslev. J.D. Falslev with a good return out across the 40 and gave a little back. Celebrating its six years sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And today, Allstate has contributed more than $2.2 million in scholarship monies. DeAndre Burrell, he has led the Utah State offense to touchdown, field goal, touchdown in their last three possessions. Now play action for Heaps. And a streaking man at his complete downfield as he's able to get it to his tight end, Devin Mahina. A 21-yard reception. Boy, Heaps could use a boost of confidence, couldn't he, Rod? Yeah, and there's a sense of urgency about what they're doing. They're behind by 17, three scores, and now you see a little bit more urgency, a little bit more down the field throwing by BYU. One of the biggest recruits from a year ago. Many had him as the number one quarterback coming out of high school. Now a true freshman starting his second full game for the Cougars. To throw again, and once again, that is complete. <laughs> As Heaps is able to find McKay Jacobson. And that was a throw. Oh, he can make a Oh, man, that was a throw. I mean, you had 23 Curtis Marsh and draped all over Jacobson, and he managed to stick that ball in there anyway. Landon Hall and DiLuigi in the I formation. DiLuigi gets the call, and he's able to get to the 20-yard line. Kyle Gallagher cuts him down. There is Gallagher. I love the comment that Bill Bush, the defensive coordinator, said. He says he throws his body around like he has an extra one back home in the closet. <laughs> yeah, if there's a hit to be made, <laughs> he's involved with it. It's a pass on second and eight. Cody Hoffman took a step forward and got free of Chris Randall. But Heaps was just off the mark. And Hoffman, I don't think, expected the ball that soon. You'll see him push off a little bit here, and there it was. He had to catch that one. That's yeah. The second drop uh, for the youngster tonight. Heaps threw it to that inside shoulder, but Hoffman has to come up with that. So now a third and eight for Heaps. Did he catch that? You gotta be kidding me. It went from a could have been Chris Randall interception to a reception by Cody Hoffman. How about that? Chris Randall was thinking pick six. Look at this. He drops right in the place, in the face of this. He's thinking pick six, and Hoffman catches the rebound. That is outrageous there. Oh, he had nothing but green in front of him. So a first down for BYU. They get a good break. Something goes their way here, finally. Delayed handoff, Korea. Tackle by Royster. 
You know, Tess thought that was a pick six before. Take a look at what Heaps does. He starts heading down the field because he knew that was going the other way. <laughs> what, a, what a relief. He was already headed to make a tackle on Chris Randall. He was so sure of the fact that he had thrown an interception. They can get a first down at the one yard line. DiLuigi. And he tries to spin free of the grasp of Quinn Garner, but unable to do so. Now, DiLuigi is quick and can change direction, but he's not a big back. And you're used to seeing BYU with big backs, particularly down in this area. And they're lacking that in their in their offense this year, this year. So now a third and five for the true freshman quarterback. Sprinting to the near side. Incomplete. Good defensive play that time by Walter McClinton. Marcus Matthews was the intended target for Heaps. Watch the way McClinton finishes this play. He just chases down across the field and cuts in front. I mean, that's what you do when you chase someone across the field in the crossing route. You got to catch up before you can actually make the play. He did a great job of catching up. So Mitch Payne will come on for the field goal attempt. He's had a good, consistent four year career. Very accurate inside of 40 yards. This is a 23 yard attempt. And he just sneaks it through that upright. So BYU gets on the board. They were looking for seven. McClinton said rejection. 17 to 3, Utah State up. They've been playing this series for a long time. Started back in 1922, the 80th meeting here between BYU and Utah State. In recent years, it's been dominated by the Cougars. But tonight, Utah State off to a real good start. Erwin Williams on the return for the Aggies. Still on his feet. And Williams with a strong return. Breaking tackle after tackle. Sixty seven yard return by Kerwin Williams. Test breaking tackles, but good blocking at the point of attack. Look at the hole he has there. Now watch him run through tackles. He'll run through two or three of them. There's the first one. There's the second one. Such determination. On a kickoff return, outstanding. Good blocking at the point of attack and then running through tackles. Burrell keeps it. Now pitches. Watkins. Good gainer for Watkins. Of course, you can start your day at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning on ESPNU with College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Then 10 a.m. to noon on ESPN. Florida's got a new weapon. His name's Trey Burton. He's something special. Chip Kelly's going to be on the set. Stanford's Owen Marisic. What a story he's become. And Aaron Andrews talks with Greg McElroy. Start your day with game day. Burrell. Complete inside the 15-yard line to Dante Watkins. Nice throw, nice throw. Watkins with a great catch. You know, I'm wondering about game day. I'm wondering if Desmond, Chris, Aaron, Coach, Kirk, 
Are they going to bother to go to sleep? <laughs> you might as well stay up and watch the Ryder Cup Sports Center and roll right into game day. You're right, and they got that West Coast start time, of course. Yep. There at Oregon. 6 a.m. West Coast start. First down for the Aggies. Spade. And he is inside the 10. So just when BYU comes down the field, gets on the board, and tries to settle down the energy here at Romney Stadium, the big return by the Aggies, and now they are in business again inside the 10. Concern for Bronco and company. Yeah, yeah Burrell has been big all night. Here's Spate Wildcat. Backs his way in to the six yard line. Jadon Wagner and Shane Hunter clogged up that middle for the Cougars. Hard to believe this is the same BYU team that knocked off Washington in the first week of the season. Just as a program, it's hard for a lot of people to believe that this is the program that's been so dominant with winning ways in recent years. Number 12 in the polls to finish up a season ago. Martino now looking for a little crack in that defense. His helmet comes off, but he has the first down for the Aggies. It'll be first and goal. Well, that BYU run defense is having issues tonight, and they're certainly missing Romney Funga, who blew out his knee last week in an ugly, ugly block. He is out for the year. Coach Mendenhall very upset with what he thought was a clip that wasn't flagged. Aggies coming up just short was Kerwin Williams. Well, they bring that speed around. They've had success, and you can see that Andrew Rich, the best defensive player for BYU, is down. He is number one in the nation in solo tackles. And that is a big concern to Coach Mendenhall. We'll take a break and come back with Rich on the ground. As we have a timeout here with the injury to Andrew Rich. 17-3 Utah State. And they're looking for more down near the goal line. A reminder that the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Kansas Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. And coverage begins with NASCAR Countdown at noon on ESPN2. Well, you, you just knew you knew Jimmy Johnson was going to get back in the mix. Now he's in second place after that great race he had last week. And he is uh, just flying around there. I remember reading earlier in the week about him having a two month old and the impact that's had on his family. Guess the kid needs new shoes and he's really focused on that. Well, that's a real good sign yep. right there Rod. Yep. Andrew yes. Rich. Andrew Rich. Being helped up to his feet. He took a big hit on that collision at the goal line as he lowered his head. But you can see that he was able to get to his feet and with the help of the medical staff at BYU walk off the field. Watch him come in here. Yeah, he lowers his head. Never want to see that. But I think it's his own man that he runs into that gets the big hit on him. But you just hate to see a guy lower his head. That's one of the most dangerous things you can do on the football field. That really exposes you. you Got to keep your head up and see what you're hitting. Rich already with six tackles tonight. We told you number one in the nation in solo tackles. So second and goal. Spate. And he powers ahead for another score for Utah State. They have come to play. And the fans have come to enjoy Spade lowering the shoulder again. He's run low to the ground inside the five yard line and just pounded his way into the end zone for the second time. sensed it being with the staff this week that they knew that what happened last week against Fresno State 
And San Diego State after that, that is not what this team is all about. And Rod, do I get see this right here? Yeah. I want that. That's a piece of the goalpost that they tore down <laughs> back in 1993. I know it's been scattered all over the campus and whatnot. Everybody got a little piece, and, and now we have a have it as well. That's pretty cool. I so like in that. 1993, that's the last time that Utah State defeated BYU. They did so 58 to 56. So a dramatic fashion, but it's been 17 years since they've been in position to try to do it again. Well, we've been here a couple of days, and everywhere we went, we heard the people talking about how badly they wanted to knock off BYU and they thought this would be the year that they thought BYU was vulnerable. Now false left. Remember he had a good return last time. This time he is chopped down at the 32. So let's give you some perspective of how these teams have met up through the years all the way back in 1922. Obviously recent history. You know what BYU has been a consistent winner winning the last 10. Third straight game in this series played on a Friday night. But for BYU, now a team that has lost three straight overall. Trailing by 21 here in the final minute of the first half. Diluigi. And he bursts ahead for a gain of nine. McClinton had the tackle. Can you imagine the hand wringing going on in Provo? Come on, no, they are not conditioned to games like this. And keep in mind, Utah State, as Coach Anderson gathers the troops and Coach Mendenhall has that look on his face. But Utah State has lost their last 12 straight games to Mountain West Conference teams, let alone the losing streak to BYU. Just when they play against that conference and step up a level, things don't work out. Well, you know, in, in BYU's situation, you have to remember, too, that they are transitioning to a freshman quarterback after Max Hall had been a starter there for, what, four years at BYU. They've had some injuries. And this team is struggling to score points. This is so unlike a BYU team not to be able to put up a lot of points. Max Hall now the backup quarterback with the Arizona Cardinals. Eight. Going all the way downfield. Tried to find a streaking McKay Jacobson. But Roderick Coleman was coming in on the play. Heaps has a big arm. Very big arm, but that defense is sitting back waiting for the deep throws. Remember early on, everything was short? Yeah, well, now everything is deep. And Utah State expects it. Coleman playing a great center field. That's the second time he's come over and almost picked one off tonight. And he overthrows DiLuigi to the outside on third and one. You know, BYU came into this ball game averaging 15 points a game. When was the last time you heard about a BYU team that couldn't score in the 30s? Yeah, only scored 60 points in four games, their lowest total through the first month of a season since 2003. Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, he's had a few headaches this year. We're trying to replace some star players, some key injuries. Changes at the center position, quarterback position, lacking a big running back. Stevenson's punt. As it takes a good bounce down to the five yard line, out at the four. Building a program brought to you by Craftsman. As we look at the resume of Bronco Mendenhall. Well, he's certainly done a great job since he took over BYU. Five straight bowl appearances, a couple of Mountain West championships, coach of the year. Outstanding record. And he told the media earlier this week, he said, look, we've got some issues. I'm not certain that we're going to be able to take care of them in a week or so. And it's not the end of the world. This team will keep growing as the season goes along. He's going to have to figure out a way to dig himself out of a big hole. 
24 to 3 for the Aggies. Home fans would love to grab this upset. Let's join Ryan Burr, Lou Holtz, and Mark May back in the studio for the Olive Garden halftime report. Gentlemen, take it away. <laughs> 